We're back with another OCG meta report covering the newest OCG meta and today we have some pretty wacky decks. We got some variations of Sky Strikers, Memento, Blue Eyes White Dragon, Dragon Maid and Nemleria and of course Ryzeal and Malice, the top meta decks today. So sit back, relax and enjoy as we cover another episode of the OCG meta report. Right, so I wanted to start off with this one because I've been hunting interesting decks and this is probably the one that has caught my eye the most. They called it La Vie en Rose, which I'm not really sure what it means. Any French people in the crowd can tell me. It does have Sky Striker Ace Rose, but it also has a lot of Starry Knights. It has Protecting Spirit Logate, the Iris Sword Soul, and a bunch of the Argo Stars trap cards. Um, so this is Fresh Support, one of the premier archetypes from Supreme Darkness, which is the next set. And some things here caught my eye. So Protecting Spirit Logate, when the effect of a fairy monster on the field is activated, you can activate and special summon it from the hand. You can activate this effect by targeting one face-up card your opponent controls and one attack position on your field. You banish that opponent's card and you change your monster's defense position. And if it's destroyed, target one monster on the field. That monster cannot be destroyed by battle this turn. And the Argo Stars are pretty cool. Currently, they have one monster and a bunch of continuous traps that can just special summon themselves. And this one basically places two Argo Stars continuous traps from the deck face up. So they have the wannabe, which also deals with trap cards. And they also give a few suggestions here on what else you can use. Some Starry Knights cards, like Guster Emerald, you have Saravises, which is pretty neat. I don't know. I like the creativity from the OCG players. Next up, we have Memento, which honestly in the TCG kind of taken off. A deck that doesn't really lose to Mulcharmies, sort of, right? Uh, maybe Perulia a little bit more than usual, but not Fualos for sure. Um, playing a pretty standard lineup of monsters, but the deck hasn't been seeing a ton of play in the OCG, and now it's it's making its way. Um, I think mainly because of the fact that it doesn't really play that well into Maxi. I like the change in the target for the Silhouette Rabbit. If you don't know this card, you might want to pick up a copy. In the OCG, it's been printed pretty recently. I think for us, it was not Phantom Rhyme, but Photon Hypernova, maybe. During your opponent's main phase, you can activate this. Um, you can special summon it as a monster. And then you can negate that many monster your opponent controls as the number of continuous traps you control. So if you control one, it's one. So it's basically a negate. I think people are moving away from Azarune. Maybe not as good anymore, but honestly for us, it's still a link meta, so maybe it is. OCG 10 Pi is interesting. They have, of course, Terraforming, Prosperity, Sangian Summoning, and now Chandra, all limited. But they actually got a boost in the recent Forbidden Unlimited list because Gold Sarcophagus is now at two. When Blaster, Dragon Ruler of Flames, uh, is Infernos, I think, in the in the TCG, is banished by a card effect, you can add one fire dragon from your deck to your hand. So essentially, they lost two Chandras, but gained two Chandras with the addition of Gold Sark. In the beginning, I remember people used to play this with Blaster, but they realized it was just too consistent. Ultimate Slayer, still continuing and proving to be a very valuable card in this deck, just because half of the extra deck is pretty much open to interpretation, and Lancia's in this high deck. If you don't have a, an artifact Lancia that is like in a nice rarity, maybe consider picking it up now because Crossover Breakers has one of the most like powerful banished decks in a while that basically dies to this one card. I can't wait for us to get Heavy Storm. Please, please, please. And then another variant. Now, we know that Dragon Maid is actually getting new support in the recent premium set that is upcoming where Punk and Orcus are getting support. It's probably going to be a holiday set for us. It is, I believe, a holiday set in the OCG, so it's gonna come probably a year later, but using a Dragon Maid engine to supplement the deck. Of course, Dragon Maid Tiding is a very strong card, and the extra deck is pretty straightforward, but we do, of course, play House Dragon Maid and Shu. Um, Chamber Dragon Maid is still a very expensive card, I believe. Maybe we'll get a price on screen here. You know, if it's summoned, you can add a Dragon Maid card, spell her trap, so you basically add Tiding, and then, of course, it can tag out like the rest of the Dragon Maids can. Pretty interesting to see. This is weird because this is playing two Morganites, right? Because you don't need to activate monster effects in the hand at all. And 
It's sort of like a blue eyes variant. This is also a new card, I believe. I think this might even be exclusive to, maybe it was Supreme Darkness. So basically in Emilaria, what you do is you banish cards from your extra deck, but these guardians, these level 10s, can special summon themselves to the field when you have a face-up pendulum monster in your extra deck, I believe. So it's essentially sort of like a spam deck, but the Morganite card is actually really good. Basically, you can't activate monster effects in the hand during the duel. Monsters that you control that attack your opponent's monster can attack twice during the same battle phase. And the damage inflicted to your opponent by battle is doubled. So essentially what they do is just spam these out. They all have like 2,000, 3,000 attack. And with Morganite, they just OTK you with the Nimilaria cards. Super weird right? And this is the Great Crimson Warrior. Once per turn, you can activate this effect by targeting one monster on the field and one non-affected monster in your graveyard. Destroy it, special summon the other. So essentially, they sync this up with the blue eyes that is sent to the graveyard. Very weird. The Guardians. Um, this one has 2,500 attack. They're pretty strong. This is the more conventional build, I think, that people are going to go for when it comes to White Forest. Really complementing blue eyes. Just because of the fact that you can access the link one using the spellcasters and dragons which is pretty strong and of course light synchros this is the synergy of the deck the toy engine is very strong in this deck just because you can access synchros very easily and of course you can use toy soldier to special summon any of the white forest including the new azamina white forest monster and again the side deck you see the graveyard mold charmy here for some reason not seeing the other ones in the deck at all but uh, of course, Lancias, Lancias, Lancias. I'm going to keep saying that because this is the card you need to prepare for the next format. And this is another version, much more pure, playing three Sage and three Maiden. And even this guy, they play this as well. And of course, they play the Illusion Package because you can access Magia. They really need to reprint this card in the TCG somehow. I mean, uh, people need to get a hand of that. And this is a new card, I believe, from Supreme Darkness as well that is seeing a lot of play in Blue Eyes Light, Storm Dragon. If this card is special summon, you can activate this effect by targeting up to the number of normal monsters in your graveyard, plus one spell or trap on the field. You t okay, so you target basically a spell or trap on the field, plus one for the numbers of normal monsters in your graveyard, and you destroy them on summon. And this is a level nine, so th this is basically direct Blue Eyes support. This is the meta. Right, if you're interested to see how the meta looks like, this is a pretty weird build, actually. I think the monster lineup is pretty fair. You usually, in the TCG, you would play probably just like two bonfire, maybe. You don't need to play three. I think it's consistent enough. Seventh Tachyon, we're going to get this in Maze of the Master, which I believe is in February, I want to say, maybe. But they do also play Seventh Ascension, which is a card from uh, Legendary Duelist 9, which is interesting. I think... People are not going to be playing the trap card, so uh, no Rafflesias, but an interesting card that is going to join. And for us, we're going to get it a bit later because this comes out in Supreme Darkness, which comes out after the Crossover Breaker set. This is cool because you can use this as a level four monster for the summon of a rank four. So essentially similar to how Gigantic Sprite works, basically. But it also has really good effects. You can detach a material, and this turn you get um, two attacks for this monster, probably for like solid Zeus lines. And if it's sent to the graveyard, you can activate this effect by targeting two other rank four or lower Xyz monsters in your graveyard. You special summon one, and you attach the other as Xyz material, which is really, really good. And this is only from sending to the graveyard, which is awesome, to be honest. And finally, this is how Malice looks like most of the time in the OCG right now. Playing Code of Soul, I think for us, we're gonna be playing three Cheshire Cat, and they're also playing this guy from Supreme Darkness, which is a new retrain of Four Mud Skipper. You can special summon it uh, if you control Link Monster, and you can banish a Cyber Monster from your hand or graveyard, and then this turn when you Link Summon, you can use this as a monster of the same name as the monster you banished. So very similar to Format Skipper, basically. You just banish instead of revealing, so you can turn this into a Malice monster, so it essentially becomes an extender Malice monster for Malice cards that you need to summon. Lingaribo, it hasn't been printed in a while. And one of the cards that I've been seeing a lot lately is Haggard Lizardos, which um, just released, I believe, in the world premiere pack in the OCG and is now seeing um, a lot of success because you can banish monsters with it, can banish ma Malice cards to draw a card. Um, 
you don't draw a card because they're not reptiles, but you banish them, you can special summon them back and it's uh, really solid. This has been another OCG meta game report. Let me know in the comments below what decks you want me to cover next. What I do basically is I go on the database and I look at successful decks that get a lot of likes and I bring them to you. Usually there's a lot of like weird special stuff in this. So please leave it down in the comments. If you want something specific, thank you so much for watching. Like the video, subscribe. I will see you in the next one. Peace.